Names are important because they describe something or someone, amen? And we're able to uh, put a picture on, uh, on something when you tell me what it is, amen? And uh, there's a multitude of names. Uh, everything has a name nowadays, and names even become brands, and, you know, um, but there is one name. Say one name. Yes. There is one name that's above all names. Yes. <laughs> that name is Jesus. Come on, somebody. Uh, the name Jesus is above. Now, now I know we all say, well, I, I, I know some other Jesuses don't nothing happen. That's because they ain't really Jesus. I got a brother-in-law named Jesus. I'm sorry. Jesus. Sorry. Hallelujah. Glory. There's only one Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, there's only one Jesus. There's only one Jesus. And the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 4, it says, by no other name can a man be saved except by the name Jesus. Now, what does that mean to you and I? It means that the name Jesus has a purpose attached to it to make it the name Jesus. And that purpose was to come and take away the sin of mankind. Not to cover my sin. Not to let me keep on secretly sipping, secretly getting high, secretly doing all the stuff. Because that's just covering it. It's to take it away. And until I learn to understand that name and put my trust in that name, my sins will not be taken away. See, there's some people saying, well, why can't God just come and do it for me? Wow. Where's the honor in that? That's right. yeah, that would make you a robot. Yeah. Robots aren't made by God. They're made by man. Yeah. The honor is when you and I say, I love you more than I love this thing. Uh, some of you ain't going to clap because there's some things you love. You love football more than you love your wife. Oh, <laughs> oh well, Hello. For real, it, it, it kills me how you got all these people that never played a sport in their life, can't fight, want to watch MMA all day, UFC, leave their family, want to want to watch football all the time. That's my team. Who's on the starting quarterback? Um, see, because everybody want to belong to something, which means you got a misplaced passion. See, people that have a misplaced passion don't understand the power that's in the name of Jesus. See, for my family, I know that God, it's not God's will that we starve to death. It's not God's will that we die of sickness and disease. I've got to know the power of the name of Jesus and what Jesus wanted to do. Because he said, I came to restore all things. Say all things. He didn't say some things. He said all things. So some of us that come in here that say, I ain't like everybody else. Oh, y'all got one thing you've been dealing with. I've been dealing with everything. It's all right if you serve a God that says he can take everything and place it in that place called all things and you will overcome everything that's been going on in your life. But you've got to surrender. Come on. Because the power of God does not work until you crucify your life. Mm. Come on now. Jesus. It's the name above all names. Yes. Philippians 2.10 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth. Yes. Where is hell right now? Yes. He told you right there. Did you know they said the center of the earth is hotter than the sun? Scientists say that. Something going on down there. Come on now. <laughs> the earth is 8,000 miles in diameter. We don't even have the technology to go past three. Everything else is just a guesstimation. Just like you got these atheists, atheists against God. They always say, well, the, the Adam was here 6,000 years ago. Yes, we know. But there were men on the earth millions of years ago. Were they? Show me somebody you know that their family bloodline, they can trace it back a million years. Yeah, come on out. Because we can go back 6,000. Oh, gosh. I'm going to make sure. Okay. We serve a mighty God. They're putting billboards up all over uh, Sacramento for atheists. I'm not mad at atheists. I love atheists. Matter of fact, I hope I get to know some because I know if they give me an opportunity to pray at their kitchen table, I'm going to pray down the power of God. That, they're gonna be like, that was the best steak I ever had. There was something wrong with that steak. I feel like a different man or a different woman. All of a sudden, I want to sing some worship songs. I used to say I didn't believe in God. What's the, the power of God is in the name of Jesus. We got to know the power of the word, the power of the name, and the power of the blood. Yes. 
Every day we get up, we should be pleading the blood of Jesus over our family. I do not miss a day. And I could go, I could die, go before the Lord. And he'll say, you did that every day. You pleaded the blood. First, I surrender my heart to God. Anybody here ever get in the flesh? Yes. <laughs> uh, some of y'all may raise your hand because you're in the flesh. <laughs> Amen. We're humans, we get in the flesh. Yes. Here I am, Pastor G. Waking up, I surrender my heart to God and you full charge today, God. But then I find myself in the flesh. Mm. You know why? Because we leaky vessels. Yes. Amen. We have emotions. Say emotions. Emotions. Look, some of y'all can't even handle your emotions right now. Y'all going through it. Talking about, you know, how long is brother going to be? Because I, I got lunch. I got, I got lunch. I'm going to do the Sunday religious lunch thing. It's Christmas time. <laughs> you don't know how many more Christmases you're going to have. That's right. Come on. That's right. Who said you're going to make it to this Wednesday? Come on. What if this was your last service? What you going to get out of it? Come on. Because once we cross over, That's it. there's no coming back. That's right. That's good. Wonderful counselor. Yes. Wonderful counselor. See, some of us don't mind going to see a drug counselor, alcohol counselor. Because we like the way they tell us it's going to be all right. Just have a higher power. <laughs> higher power, that don't help me. You know why? I can always aim, but I don't even know what I'm aiming at. And you know, if you aim at nothing, you can't hit it, though. <laughs> Some of them didn't get it. How you gonna hit something if you don't, if there's nothing there? That's my point. You aim at nothing, you'll hit it. And some of us might be aiming at nothing. And that's why we feel like we're alright, because we're hitting on nothing. <laughs> Wonderful counselor. In other words, he said, if you do what I say, you feel different after you obey. Number one, you can give to Jesus today is your obedience. We can all wrap up a beautiful gift to give to God today called obedience. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to give him a gift of obedience. Give him a gift of obedience. Wonderful counselor means able to give you his undivided attention and to empower you and to guide you. It kills me how many people want to go to people before they go to God. You know what happens? If I don't learn to go to God first, come on, come on. I don't become a master of the gospel. If I go to people first, I become the master of gossip. Because I always go and never get what I'm looking for anyway. We end up saying, well, your problem ain't as bad as Sister Righteous. Man, she's all messed up. Did you hear about her? How do you know? She came and told me, but don't tell nobody. You know, you didn't hear that here. But I did hear it here. I see when you call people to the carpet on it, they don't want to go to church here no more. Yeah. They want to go to the church of the frozen chosen. Because I can, I can talk about people until they catch me there. See, I'm not here to be the gospel police. I'm just saying, let's get our hearts right so we can see a manifestation of God we've never seen before. Amen. You know, God is attracted to surrender. Yeah. Obedience is an act of surrender. Yes. I, I, I got to say that again. Obedience is an act of surrender. Amen. So many people say they want to surrender. But the, I don't know what to do. I want to surrender. But then every day, you got to get up. Obey God. Yeah. Surrender is the first step to full obedience. Uh, say mighty God. mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's able to meet all your needs. Anybody got a need in here today? No matter every day we got needs, but just like our children, our children has needs. They just don't worry about it because they know they got papa or mama or they may just have mama, but they got somebody that they ain't got to worry about it. They know my daughter ain't going to worry about nothing. If she needs something, she knows she can go to me or go to my wife. And that's the way we should be with our heavenly father. But most people don't understand how to have that relationship. You should be trusting in God. Yes, they're going to take your apartment away. That's all right. I had a rough stint. They're going to take it away, but I serve a mighty God. And we just begin to pray for God to show what he wants, he's either going to say, you ain't going nowhere, or you're going to say, I got something better for you. Yeah. Yeah. Say, mighty God. mighty God. 
is able to meet all your needs and save us from eternal death and work miracles in our life. Can I help you?